I met Chris Boxall Cree through a good friend of mine, Jimmy Mayles. Cree had set up the Lake Victoria Children's Home some ten years previous, and I told Cree that I'd like to do something to help, and he explained to me that the one thing they needed were toilets. Around about the same time, I met Barbara Sadassi, who runs the Johnny Rhythm Foundation, and she in turn told her brother, a renowned ecologist, about the toilets, and he said the thing that they needed in Uganda are anaerobic digesters. In Uganda, they're cutting down trees at such a rate that by 2045, there will be no forests left in Uganda. Anaerobic digesters stop the need for firewood. They stop pollution from open fires and they produce a fertilizer for crops and they would get their toilets. It seemed like the right thing to do. So Barbara and I set out to raise enough money to do this and enough money to get clean water up to the children's home. But this what really made it possible was that we found John and his biogas team who would help us build the digester in Uganda. Firstly, you take manure from the cows and pigs and mix it with water in the mixing chamber. When it's properly mixed, you pull out the plug and the mixture goes to the bottom of the digester. In the digester, the manure breaks down and gives off a methane gas. The methane rises up and collects at the top of the dome of the digester. As the pressure builds, the gas is forced down onto the manure mix and forces the manure out of the digester through the expansion tank. This is called slurry and is used as a fertiliser to help plants grow. Meantime, the gas is collecting in the dome, so through a pipe on the top of the digester, the built-up pressure pushes the gas to the gas rings where the gas is ignited and used for cooking. about five days to dig the hole for the digester but all of a sudden the water stopped coming up which meant we had no water for building so we would have to get the new water supply ahead of schedule. First we plumbed a borehole which we found to be approximately 180 foot deep and we then set the pump down at 140 foot. We dug trenches for the piping and laid a cable from the local school for electricity which meant at the end of the first week the hole was dug Fresh water was coming up to the home, which meant we could start our building work. At this point John and his team arrived and concreted the bottom of the digester hole. They set out the first course of bricks and John left his team for the next two weeks to build the toilets and digester. Everybody got involved in digging the hole and building the digester. Children as young as six were helping us move the soil and carrying things. In fact, employing people from the children's home and locally not only meant that they got much needed employment but everyone had a connection with the digester. It's very interesting to see the technique and the skill that John's men used to build the digester. With the dome built and rendered on the outside, it was then blasted seven times to make it gas tight. At the end of the two weeks, the toilet and the digester were built and it was time to start thinking about buying animals and priming the digester. We then planned the pig pen. We had to put in a reinforced floor to stop the pigs from digging. The bays are separated by eucalyptus poles and the roof put over them to keep them dry. Then we went to the pig farm to collect the pigs. On the way back one managed to jump out the back of the truck but we did manage to find it and eventually we got the pigs back safe to the pig pen. Then after building cow sheds, we had to go out looking for cows. 
It was really great to see everyone's reaction when they saw the cows. Not only would they be getting manure for the digester, but they would also be getting fresh milk every day. Although it did come as a surprise to me how much cows eat even after grazing, still, it was great to see everyone's reaction. They were really happy with the cows. Next, we had to prime the digester. We had to put in over 12 tonne of manure, which was mixed with water. The next thing was to see if the gas was moving through the pipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric is amazed. Mm. Eric Eric Definitely. <laughs> Eric Helders helped us put it all together. Yeah, it's very good, guys. A lot of guys. That is great. Bent. Wow, look at the heat Instant on cooking now. No excuses. I won't mind in them that time. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. No, Jesus. I can't do it. I was like, I can't do it. 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 In seven weeks we'd achieved all we'd set out to do. We had built toilets, a digester, bought cows and pigs, built their homes, got fresh water running up to the home and got them cooking on gas, using local people, local wisdom and appropriate technology. With creative design, the home had their first permaculture system. Permaculture is about sustainable living and now using permaculture techniques we're raising money to help the children's home and grow all the crops they need for their animals and themselves, going a step further to making them self-sustaining. And we want to build more digesters. They can be smaller for families of six or larger. For instance, schools with over 500 pupils can run digesters from the waste of the pupils alone. Or even larger digesters can be built that can produce electricity that could run a small factory. In fact, this sustainable system can be easily replicated all over Uganda, looking after the environment and helping others to help themselves. My name is Innocent, but I have no much to say, but I want to appreciate for all things you have done for us. I want to thank you. Yes, it has been lovely to meet you with the, the two visitors and the press who brought you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>